this woman has received. Dorothy Loud has spent much of her professional life trying to explain hypotenuse and logarithms and other vague mathematical concepts to high school students. Her superior abilities at this often thankless job has led to her selection by the governing board of the Kalamazoo County Teachers Association as Teacher of the Year in Kalamazoo County. Our congratulations. Thank you, Noah. And you're a math teacher of all things. Dorothy, how do you make mathematics interesting? Um, I feel that my enthusiasm for the subject uh, is something that rubs off on my students, and I think primarily that's how I make uh, math interesting for my students. Also, uh, where the concepts are abstract, uh, I try and use visual aids as uh, a means of uh, transferring the abstract to reality for my students. Um, you brought along such an example. Yes, Explain I did. Explain to us what, what all this is. Okay. Um, this is a, uh, a sphere. A sphere, right. Uh, recently, in geometry, we were studying the uh, surface area and volume of three-dimensional objects and uh, solids and uh, the kids bought into the um, volume and surface area of things such as cylinder and uh, uh, rectangular solid but I had a difficult time explaining to them the volume of the sphere. So you decided instead to show it. Right. Um, uh, again to bring it to the reality by using displacement of water um, and having them buy into the fact that the amount of water displaced was equal to the volume of the objects that displace the water and that way showing them that the formula given to them, the abstract formula given to them, does actually, is correct and does actually apply. I'm sure as you're talking to your students, very often you see this glazed look over their eyes. What in the world is this woman talking about? What do you do then? Uh, at that point, when I see that happen, I stop my discussion and I, and I backtrack. I ask the students specifically if I see that. I ask them to, uh, uh, at what point did I lose you? Have me backtrack and re-explain. And that uh, really helps. Um, when I'm uh, going through the process of, process of explaining a, 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 the development of an equation at the board, for example, and it may have umpteen number of steps in it, which I happen to do this morning. And if I feel that I've lost them, I, I backtrack and, and that helps. Again, usually using the visual aids uh, in the algebra um, diagrams of the board or whatever might help them. Even if it happens a couple of times during the class? Oh, no, definitely. Three, four, five, mm -hmm. six times? Uh, unless I know that they're pulling my leg, then I uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to ask you a tough question. You had a difficult year professionally this year when the Gull Lake teachers went out on strike. I'm sure you were faced with a personal dilemma as well as a professional dilemma. You yes. were on the bargaining committee. You were one of those that recommended that the teachers go out. How did you personally feel when the teachers uh, and yourself on the, urban, on the picket line and you watched the students go past back into their classrooms? It was difficult to know that um, someone else was taking on the responsibility of my students and the education of my students. And I felt that um, I was the one who should be responsible for that and that someone else should not be stepping in in my place. Um, at the same time I could understand or try and understand or comprehend where the other side was coming from, where the administration was coming from, and I guess I had to, to accept uh, what was going on, but I still felt the responsibility of their education was mine, so when I walked back into the classroom, that's the day I felt that education started. Mm. Is it something that has carried through this year? Um, I would say the first few days. Uh, uh, the war stories of what went on in the, in the buildings and so on um, uh, began to subside after about a week. But um, when I walked into the classroom, I, I told my students, we're going to put the last three weeks behind us and we're going to get down to the serious business of education. And I think that that has um, carried on throughout the year and um, um, there's very little talk about what, what went on during those first three weeks. Toughest time during your teaching career? I would say so, yes, this year and last year. Did you come away from that experience with a different idea of education, Dorothy? I feel that education has to be a cooperative effort, that um, it's the responsibility of teacher, student, uh, parent definitely, and also administration. And I feel that we have to communicate well with each other in order to make it come off well. One quick question. Who was your favorite teacher? Um, Sister Marciana, who was my uh, high school uh, algebra teacher. Mm -hmm. She was very um, uh, vibrant and buoyant and she also made the subject very real and uh, her exuberance in the classroom is something that I guess rubbed off on me and her influence together with my father's influence um, uh, was the reason for why I pursued uh, education but especially math education.
Dorothy Argana, congratulations. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. For nice as Educator of the Year, a veteran of 15 years in the classroom, Dorothy heads up the math department at Gull Lake High School. All of us remember a special teacher who made learning fun. Sandy Swartz tells us about one such teacher today and her first grade students at Oakwood Elementary School. School days begin early for Esther Ferguson, arriving in time to greet her charges for the day. These students waste no time getting down to work, giving us the impression that they're eager to learn something new today. Yeah, my job is um, to teach these children, and I feel that's what I'm doing. I'm not babysitting. Organization is the key, as the larger group follows directions for today's accomplishments left on the board the night before, Esther expands the think power of her academically talented children. I feel all children want to learn, and um, they enjoy learning if they're motivated, and if you make it fun. Teaching these days is no longer taught to the tune of a hickory stick from behind the comfort and security of the desk. Mrs. Ferguson uses a hands-on approach, close enough for guidance. Stage of the Grand Ole 